Every year, billions of people from all over the world celebrate another successful orbit of the sun without dying, or as we tend to call them, birthdays. <laughs> If you're like me, then you probably have that super annoying relative who insists that you haven't turned a year older until your actual birth time on your birthday. So then you have to go and find your birth certificate and look up your birth time and then calculate the difference between the time zone where you were born versus the time zone where you're currently living and come up with the current time when you turn a year older. And that time may be fine, except that it's wrong. Even the most pedantic time calculators among us forget the most important factor on calculating exactly one year, the difference between a calendar year and a solar year. See, a calendar year has to contain a whole number of days, either 365 on a normal year or 366 on a leap year. But a full solar year, which is the average time between two identical successive equinoxes, doesn't last a whole number of days. Instead, it lasts 365.2421897 days, or 365 days, 5 hours, 48 minutes, 45 seconds. The difference between a calendar year and the solar year is about a quarter of a day, so every four years we add a day to the calendar year and make a leap year. Without this correction, the calendar year would drift in relation to the actual year, and the seasons would slowly change over time. The spring months would become the winter months, and the summer months would become the spring months. What this yearly drift means for our real-world time calculations is that when we look at any given time and want to find a year from it, it's actually that same time plus five hours and about 49 minutes the next year. So for example, if we were to take a date and time at random, like say March 22nd at 8 a.m., exactly one year from that point would be March 22nd at 1.49 p.m. Except if there was a leap day in between, exactly one solar year from March 22nd at 8 a.m. would be March 21st at 1.49 p.m. So if we want to be really, really precise, the anniversary of our birth could fall on the date before or after the calendar date that we were born on. But that date drift largely depends on when you were born in relation to a leap year and at what time of the day. But don't worry, it's pretty easy to figure out when your birth anniversary is. All you have to do is multiply the number of years you've been around by 5 hours and 49 minutes and subtract the number of leap years you've experienced multiplied by 24 hours. Take your positive or negative result and add it to your birth time and that will give you your birth anniversary time. So since I was born on November 25th, 1986 at 1022 in the morning, this year my birth anniversary lands at 514 a.m. Next year, it's going to shift to 11.03. In 2016, it's going to be 4.52 p.m. on the 24th. For Tech Laboratories, I'm Tech Adams, saying keep thinking, thanks for watching, and happy birthday. <coughs> Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Tech Laboratories for more mind-blowing videos on science and technology. There we go. The whole diagram is the complete engine nacelle made up of the airflow inlet, the Pratt & Whitney J58 engine, the convergent divergent ejector, and the airplane body. At speeds below Mach 2, the J58 acts like any other afterburning turbojet engine. And blue airflow. light. The yellow highlighter contains special pigments called phosphors that react to ultraviolet light and glow. When I put this piece of glass between the source of ultraviolet light